and a glimpse inside the locker room. Players' final few moments to prepare for the game and the task ahead. Thank you for tuning into this Sunday afternoon 2K Sports edition of the NBA. This is Kevin Harlan alongside Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. DA will join us tonight on the sideline. Hey, Dave. Thanks very much. Well, Commissioner Adam Silver has a history lesson for those who would tell players to shut up and dribble. He says in 1963, Bill Russell was MVP, won a title, and stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial for Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. There is a through line that exists directly from Russell to our modern players. Kevin? That's a great story, DA, thanks. You know, we are still so early, Clark, in this season, but for young teams, what's important right now? What's in front of them? Kevin, I think a couple of things. One, to understand the effort and the attention to detail you need to bring to every performance. And then getting comfortable with each other. Getting everybody on the same page. And then, Defining roles, understanding what lane you have to run in for your team as a player, I think those are critically important early in the season. And checking out Utah's opening go. lineup, they've got Clarkson, Jared Vanderbilt out there with Olenek. Then it's Lowry Markinen, and it's Sexton in at the point guard position. And for Philadelphia, on the block, it's Tucker next to Embiid. Shake Milton is out there with DeAnthony Milt, and it's Harris in at the small forward position. The shot by Sexton, no good. And here's Embiid. He'll bring it up for the Philadelphia 76ers. Last time they met was right here, and they came out with a win. Yeah, and that one, they just locked it down defensively. Challenged shots and, and really protected the rim. Boy, I tell you what, I think you got to really appreciate the grit. Getting dirty, staying engaged. That's really what defense is all about. Up again, and it's Philadelphia with the rebound. They come into this one having outplayed the Magic last game. Well, you look at the points they produced in that game. Great adjustments on the offensive end. Well, it's really hard to stop them when they're in a groove offensively. And they were in a comfort zone all game long in that one. First team foul. Here's MB. With his average of more than 32 points a game, he's giving opponents nightmares with his firepower. Over Vanderbilt. Embiid, no good. We play just over a minute here in the first. When Joel Embiid entered the NBA, many questioned if he would be able to overcome the devastating injuries. Well, you know, he didn't play his first two years in the league. Those questions were fair to ask. I mean, is this guy ever going to get on the court? But once he did, oh, my. A monster. I've not seen a big guy do the stuff Joel Embiid can do. It's actually insane. Oftentimes, Clark with Jared Vanderbilt, his impact isn't reflected in the box score. Yeah, you know, that's a good point, Kevin. He puts up solid rebounding numbers, but I think it's his defense, which is his greatest attribute. He's a lockdown defender, and he's a high-energy hustle guy who plays with a lot of edge and tenacity, and that has value on just about any team. And that one falls for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt hits them both. And some added toughness on the roster. Something Philly knew they needed after last year's playoffs. The hope is adding scrappy veterans like P.J. Tucker and DeAnthony Melton will help them further this go-round. A nice shot by MB. I know it's a tall task, but you've got to box out MB. It's really that simple because if you don't, He's going to make you pay. Hartson against Melton. Here's Sexton. And Joel Embiid pulls it down. 76ers have gone just 1 of 4 to get this game started. Harris inside. He's covered by Clarkson. A nice shot by Harris. You know, you can't allow Harris to get comfortable there now, guys. I mean, once he gets the positioning he wants, you're toast. Markinen kicks to Vanderbilt. Back to Markinen. And Markinen throws it down. Well, check out that assist. That's a pair of teammates that are clearly on the same page. Tucker a screen. Milton with the ball. Guarded now by Sexton. 
First quarter of basketball, just over two and a half minutes play. Good on the three-point shot. Just a creative ball handler. Sexton does a really good job with his change of speeds and direction, keeping the defender off balance. No good off the back of the rim. Jazz leading by three. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. That one on Harris. And because of the combination of strength and blazing speed, Sexton can get to the line at a high rate. And we've seen it for years. Despite their regular season success, the Jazz just unable to make much noise in the playoffs. Credit the front office for coming to terms with it and pivoting to a rebuild while they could get top values for their stars. And the dunk by MB. MB showing you a little force, wanting to dunk it down whenever he can. Clarkson outside. Inside, Vanderbilt. Nice pass. Led him to the rack perfectly for the layup. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Well, this early, they should be showing a lot more energy on defense. It's not there. Here's Melton. From outside, off the mark. Jazz leading by five. From outside the arc. A shot by Clarkson, no good. The pass to Embiid. Lays it up off the glass. And Beach got six. For Utah, they've gone three of seven from the field since we've gotten underway. Timeout is called first of the game for the Jazz. Moving on after the tough loss they took at the hands of the Warriors. Yeah, tough game on the road. The guys you're defending, obviously comfortable shooting in their own building. You've got to find a way to break their rhythm. Yeah, and it's not easy to do. Much easier said than done, but they're capable of making it happen. It just comes down, I think, to will and desire. And it's a completely new group here for Philadelphia. Here's Alexander Walker. And it is flushed down with a nice jam. Taking matters into his own hands. Yeah, we didn't expect to see that kind of finish. And you know, guys, when your point guard is making explosive plays at the rim, I really do think it sets the tone for the rest of the team. And Philadelphia has possession, following the bucket by the Jams. 135 left in the first. Here's Gay, and then Gay with the dunk. Gay, an outstanding player, finishing with power. Doesn't get any easier than that. Freibold, the pass to House. Uses the glass to finish the lane. And really, it's been a major aspect of their offense in the early stages here. Their success working the ball inside and getting points from close range. And it's Beasley finishing it off. Well, I tell you what, there's a little bounce to Beasley's game. This fella, uh, he can get off the ground and, and elevate on you. Here's Cork Mons, after by Beasley. Here's Niang. It's deflected. Here's Gay. Pass to Alexander Walker. Shoots from eight. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. And certain teams take on the attitude of their city. And over the years, Philadelphia has been one of the centers known for having tough teams, much like the town. Good on both. 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Here's Fable. And they call the foul, so he's got the and one chance here to make it a three-point play. A defensive breakdown there, no doubt about it. I mean, he's a guy you have to be focused on defensively. Here's Alexander Walker. Off target there, that would have pushed the lead to double digits. Here is House to the left side wing. Now here's Harold. 
And that concludes the first quarter of play. It's the Jazz leading by seven. Live from Philadelphia. And if you're just joining us, we've played through one quarter in this one. Now let's take a moment to get your guys' take on the scoring so far for Utah. One of the things, actually the one thing that really stands out to me is the amount of points they're piling up at the charity stripe. They're doing a great job getting to the line and converting. And also they've been draining mid-range jump shots, measuring the defense well, and just taking what they give them. On the block, it's Tucker next to Embiid. DeAnthony Melton out there with Shake Milton. And it's Harris in at the three. That's the group on the floor for Philadelphia. A moment now to check out some numbers for Shake Milton. And so Sexton will bring it up for the Utah Jams. That'll be the third game of this three-game road trip. Passes to Vanderbilt. Now Markinen from downtown. And Embiid pulls it down. Embiid's got his fifth rebound right now in the game. Harris passes to Tucker. Sexton with it. He's coming off a 13-point game against the Warriors in San Francisco. Markinen can't get it to go. And, you know, even though that shot didn't go down, I, I like how they got him a wide-open look in space there. And Markinen can give you, Greg, a solid defensive effort at both the three and the four. And, Kevin, many thought Markinen was a defensive liability. But give him credit. Worked hard to prove he wasn't. And while not a superb defender, he has become a plus defender for this team. He has to make that one. I mean, you have to make the defense pay when they slough off of you like that. In the corner, it's Melton. Tries again. There's Embiid. Fouled in the act of shooting. Gets the bucket That's anyway, good. so a three-point play chance for him. And that's 10 straight points in the paint. The defense, nowhere to be found. I think they've really got to start committing more bodies down low and really kind of close that area off defensively. Jordan Clarkson, he's checked in for Utah. And in the last decade, defense's switching on screens has increased dramatically. Is this the new normal, you think? Kevin, I think so. I think teams that switch well tend to defend well. Because switching can create mismatches, but it's harder to punish those now with all the help defense. Here's Harris. That one doesn't go. Now the Jazz take it the other way. And he commits the intentional foul. Really no idea why you're fouling in a situation like that. You know, maybe there's some bad blood between those two. Yeah, but that's no excuse for that kind of foul. I mean, that might be an explanation for it, but it certainly doesn't justify it. And even then, it's uh, just not a good play. And it's the defense that's making it tough on them here in the second quarter, not finding the easy buckets like they did in the first. Here's Harris. Rebound, Utah. Well, you know he wants that one back. I mean, more often than not, he'll sink that mid-range jump. Vanderbilt, a screen on Harris. And no one near Clarkson as he lets it go. Vanderbilt, great positioning on the putback. And those second chance points really become almost like bonus points when you can get them. Tucker a screen. Here's Melton going inside. Rebound, Utah. Vanderbilt's got his sixth rebound on the night. And you know there aren't many teams with a more dedicated fan base than Utah. The Jazz fans are behind their team no matter what. And for those of you just joining us in the second quarter with about three minutes gone by, they've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. On the wing, Milton. Defended by Sexton. And with that, the Utah lead is cut down to three on the bucket for Milton. It's always striking great to see the bond between the Jazz team and their followers. Well, when you're the only game in town, people take the team to heart. And we see it in cities like Portland and San Antonio as well. The fans form that attachment to their team. Five to shoot. Clarkson for three. The basket good off the assist from Sexton. Clarkson's got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. And Philadelphia decides to take their first timeout right here. 
And the 76ers with a completely new group now. Here we are in November. Let's see how things are shaking out in the West early in the season. Taking a look at Utah. Here in the early part of the season, they've acquired the third best record in the conference. And, and seeing where Utah is, they're proving that all the talk we heard about them in the preseason was warranted. What a role this group's been on here early on. It appears to me, though, that this group has all the ingredients for a special season. Well, Clarkson doesn't do huge assist numbers, but he won't waste a wide-open opportunity. Abel with the ball. Gay picks him up defensively. And good that time. And the lack of effort to fight over the screen there makes that an easy shot. Well, I'm going to credit the screen. I mean, that's a good, strong pick he lays there. Three from Gay. And they'll get another chance. Alexander Walker. There it is, guys. One of those effort plays that makes a big difference in the game. And, G.A., it is definitely making a difference so far today. Well, you know, if you're not going to take care of the defensive glass, it's going to be hard to come away with the win. And that's the battle they haven't been winning today. Their work on the glass has been porous, and that's got to change. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, as they're looking to battle back, that's one of the key elements. you got to rebound. Back to game. There's the triple. Rebound by Harold. And one thing I liked in the first quarter was their aggressiveness to draw the contact, putting the defense on the defensive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think they need to continue to press that advantage. They've got to get back to that. Don't go away from that. It's been working so well for them. Stay with them. From the stripe. And good. And it takes a nice bounce off the right iron and down. Martin Tucker's got the lead up to 10 now for Utah. Now, Feibel. There's Harold. Misses in close. Man, I can't believe he blew that gimme, guys. Well, I know he's frustrated about that. Clarkson outside. Pass to Gay. A floater. Basket. Good. Gay's got his second basket of the game. Gay has made a great transformation over the years from a traditional wing to somebody who scores all over the court, including inside. And the shot is good. The Utah lead has been cut down now to just 10 on the basket from Korkma. 32. Thanks very much, Doc. I heard you imploring your team stick to the game plan. All right, Dave, thank you. And time now. Greetings, everybody. Before we review the first half, let's take an early seat. You look at the Jazz. They've been incredible. All right, and shifting gears to our current matchup, it's been a And that's all for us. Played through the first half. Plenty of basketball, though, left in this one. Joel Embiid has been sensational. Man, he's been running wild on them through that first half. Absolute dynamite on offense. And you know what? I'll be interested to see just how much he's got left in the tank. That first half had to take a lot out of him. Taking a look at the Jazz. Clarkson is out there with Colin Sexton. Then there's Jared Vanderbilt. Then it's Olenek, and it's Markinen in at the small forward. Smooth reverse. He knew just what he was doing there. Now, here's Sexton, defended by Milton. Sexton dishes to Olenek. Sexton with it. Now defended by MB. The shot by Sexton, no good. The inside just a bit too congested for him to get the usual shot he would have with rhythm. And Greg, the Philadelphia 76 have made it very clear that they are all in on a title run. And their front office has been very focused on trying to get top tier talent on this roster. After the trust of process here, they're now aggressively pursuing titles here in Philly. 
Here's Clarkson, and he goes strong with the one-handed jam. And Markin, and the big fella has nice court vision, solid at finding open teammates. The 76ers trail by eight. Embiid with a screen on Sexton. To the middle, Olenek with the steal. And the Jazz pushing it up now. And it's Clarkson that time on the assist by Sexton. Clarkson's got seven. That's their third straight make off an assist. Milton the pass to Embiid. Driving the lane. Count the bucket coming off a perfectly placed assist. 14 points for Joel Embiid. Jazz leading by eight. And we're just around two minutes into the final half of play now. Tipped away. Stolen by Tucker. And here's Melton. Still looking for his first bucket in this one. You know, a feed like this shows you how well-rounded Joel Embiid's game is becoming and what a good teammate he is. He's not just looking for his own. Sexton gets to Clarkson. Here's Olenek. And the dunk by Olenek. And he takes it right at the man who just scored on him. That's the way to answer back with an in-your-face stuff. Guys, some pride bubbling up right there. He wasn't about to be outshone. They get a hand on it. It's stolen by Milton. Embiid finds Harris. Here's Tucker. And the shot is long. And so, Sexton will bring it up for the Utah Jazz. The pass to Clarkson. The basket good off the assist from Sexton. Three points. Sexton's got three assists now in this one. The 76ers trail by 11. On the wing, Harris. And Tucker has it in the corner. He's looking for Embiid and finds him. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. It's on Jordan Clarkson. I'd like to see Embiid finishing like that. Not afraid to get physical, not backing away from the contact while being fouled. Well, Greg, what can you say about Joel Embiid's growth from a leadership perspective? Pretty impressive, isn't it? Tremendous, Kevin. Carrying the Sixers with everything they went through, even though he came in second in MVP voting two years in a row, no player more important to his team than Joel Embiid. Poke loose. Down low. And Sexton slams it in. Hey, whatever adjustments they made at halftime, they are working to perfection. You know, they came out of the locker room, revved up the gas pedal, and haven't slowed down yet. And he'll be shooting his first free throw of the game here. This season, he has been absolutely locked in at the free throw line. How about 90%? You know, he's been one of those players they've wanted on the line as much as possible this season, especially in close games, guys. And some changes here for the 76ers. Daniel House has checked in for Embiid. And it's Quirkmaz in for DeAnthony Melt. And Utah also making a switch. Alexander Walker's checked in. Two minutes remaining in the third. 158 left in the third. Here's Horton Tucker. A second chance effort. He lays it in. And the Jazz lead by 18. Just a solid performance on the interior. The rebounding has been off the charts. Yeah, you look across the board, it's actually sizing up, shaping up to be a great game. I mean, strong performances throughout, and they've really been strong on the glass. We've got 128 left to play in the third. Shots good by Alexander Walker. Hard to imagine them losing this game if they can keep shooting like that. Not many empty trips for this group. It seems everything's falling for them this half. Harrell was screen on Beasley. Here's Thibel. It's deflected. There's a minute left in the third. Offensive rebound. The basket counts in one. He'll go to the line with a chance to make it a three-point play. And a breakdown here, guys. The hustle stats for the Jazz. Yeah, they've been active defensively, rotating well, and, and then also closing out on shots. It's resulted in a number of blocks. 
You know, something else, guys? You know, they came out of that tunnel sprinting in a full stride sprint. That translated to the floor and lots of success in the fast break game. Just five on the clock. Harold, that's good. And guys, not much more a defender can do in that situation. Harold with the focus and the strength to just power through the contact. Gay finds Sexton. Now here's Beasley. His scoring has been there on a regular basis. He's averaging more than 14 points a game. There's 18 seconds left to play here in the third. Here is House. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. House has got his second bucket. Really, really good at recognizing the gaps and getting the ball to the rim. Sexton for three. And that shot was up in time, but doesn't go in. And as we end the third quarter, a double-digit deficit will make it tough to come back. It's the jam. Let's hear what Doc Rivers has going on over. Keep making the extra pass. Everybody. And there have been two very different performances from these teams today as we get going in quarter number four. On the block, it's Tucker next to Embiid. Jake Milton is out there with the Anthony Milton. And it's Korkmaz in at the three spot. That's the group on the floor for Philadelphia. The 76ers trail by 17. Pass to Embiid. Goes straight to the defender for the dunk. Draws the foul. He'll go to the line. Is on Colin Sexton. Embiid is unstoppable. Just too strong for the defense. No matter what they throw at him. Harris is checked in for Korkmaz. At the line for Philadelphia. The free throw drops for MB. You know, GA, something you notice about this Jazz team. They love to shoot the three. Statistics tell you that, and they tell you that. And Kevin, not only do they love it, they do it well. The two sadly don't always go hand in hand, but these guys can really hurt you from range when they get going. Sexton, the pass to Olenek. And Olenek up and down at the free throw line early in his career. But with his touch, he's bound to become more consistent. And that one falls for Olenek. The Jazz making a switch here. Clarkson's checked in. And so Olenek nails both of them. Impeccable from the line since halftime. No misses yet. You can't do much better than that, guys. To the inside. Here's Tucker. The lead pass was put in just the right spot. And though lacking some height, Tucker has the bounce, the reach, and the strength and attitude to do damage inside. Marks and dishes to Sexton. Here's Vanderbilt, and he slams it down right on top of Joel Embiid. <laughs> and guys, that's not as easy as he made it look. You've got to have some skills to pull that off. Well, he's got plenty of those, yes. that's for sure. Yes, indeed. Let's just call him ladder climber. Tucker a screen. Hilton the pass to Tucker. Makes it off the glass. Tucker's got four this quarter. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. And on the flip side, the defenders have to show more fight on the interior. They've got to offer more resistance here. Outside, Sexton. Clarkson for three. Outside for Sexton. Olenek sets a screen for Sexton. And they recover it. Utah gets it back. Vanderbilt the pass to Sexton. Arkin in with it. Back to Sexton. They shoot again. It's tipped. And there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get the shot off in time. The 76ers trail by 14. Milton with it. Embiid. Count it. And that's now 20 points for Joel Embiid. They are just killing him on the interior. Yeah, you can't say that with enough emphasis. I mean, the defenders are just not being aggressive enough down low. you got to play with some physicality in the paint. Now, here's Sexton. Defended by Milton. 
The putback controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. And the Jazz lead by 14. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. And it's been a well-rounded performance. I mean, strong rebound, and it's certainly been, at, been at, the, at the center of it. But it's been good on a number of levels. The, the chemistry has been terrific. Really impressed with their offensive execution. You know, the defense has really been kept off balance because of the outstanding passes. Four straight field goals have been made off an assist. I don't think he's performing up to his own expectations, but they still find themselves out in front. Milton kicks to Melton. And with that, the Jazz lead is cut down now to just 10 points with that basket from MB. And, and really keeping the ball hopping around here offensively. The last five trips they've had have ended with a great pass leading to a basket. They're really sharing the sugar. Clarkson for three. The basket good off the assist from Sexton. Sexton's got his fifth assist in this one. And B the screen. Milton the pass to Embiid. He gets it in there. Embiid's got 16 points here in the second half. Well, you know, there's only so much you can do against Embiid, guys. I mean, he's such a terrifically skilled offensive player with great size. I mean, he plays pretty much through any kind of contact. Time call here. The Jazz decide to talk it over. They're up by 11. 157 left in the fourth quarter. Matisse Thibel checked in for Philadelphia. Horton Tucker's checked in for Utah. Marks and dishes to Olenek. And there's a nice one-handed slam. The total answer for this team. Clarkson on one tonight. Milton the best to Embiid. And he banks in the layup. Embiid's got 13 points in just this quarter. And he's had an excellent performance overall from the field. Clarkson kicks to Vanderbilt. And he drops in the layup off the glass. And the Jazz lead by 13. Big miscommunication on defense. He recognizes it and quickly takes advantage. Boy, the defense looks shell-shocked. I mean, they're on the ropes right now, on their heels. And the whistle blows as the basket counts and a three-point play chance right here. One free throw coming up. You know, every year, MB seems to kick his scoring up just a notch. His second he, I think he realizes how dominant he can be. And Embiid, no good on that one. Jazz leading by 11. The feed now to Clarkson. And he takes the fantastic lead pass up strong for the slam. Relentless in their approach, even with the game firmly in hand. And, you know, until that final... Buzzer sounds. I mean, you've got to treat every possession like it's crucial. Tucker finds Milton. Here he goes. How Embiid. Six to shoot. And he comes up with the deuce. Embiid's got 32 points in the game. You can appreciate the fight now, but it isn't how they came into the game. Yeah, you know, I agree with you. They waited too long to finally ramp themselves up. And it's just competing. You know, giving your best when it matters most. Yeah, you know, once they got victory in their view, a huge injection of energy and a great run to finish it off. Sexton with it. Now defended by MB. The shot's good from Horton Tucker. And they came in determined to take this one. It's going to be a happy flight home. Yep, to have a stress-free win on the road, very satisfying. The fans are already headed for the exit. An extremely efficient and productive game for him, but again, he's not going to be able to do it all by himself. So it's the Jazz now. Their biggest lead of the game was 21. Well, for the Jazz, they can just run out the clock. Kicks it to Olenek. Pass to Horton Tucker. Now, here's Vanderbilt. And there's the foul. We'll go on P.J. Tucker. That is his first foul of the game. Personal foul. Second team foul. Substitution on the court. Oh. 
And so it's Utah easily grabbing the win. This was a very strong showing for him, Greg. Not necessarily a runaway win, but one they'll feel very good about. And, and let's face it, any time you can go on the road and win in the fashion they did, you have to feel good about it. it really an outstanding effort all the way around. And now we'll go to David Aldridge, who's standing by with our player of the game. Take it away, David. Thanks, Lori. Strong start for the team. How did you keep that momentum going throughout the game? Yeah, I mean, we've had leads before this season that we blew, so we had. All right, 